the uh, characters on the show, and uh, starting with um, Barry Bostwick. Yeah, Bostwick's a good example here of adjusting to talent. Um, the original mayor was darker, darker character, you know, and uh, we, we weren't, it wasn't working well in the readings that we were having with people. And the guy, Larry Bresner called me, he was a, a manager, a guy from the Bronx, and he's a friend of Barry's, and he said, Barry Bostwick wants to come in for this part, and he, you, you were not going to let him come in. And I was thinking, well, he's too big. It's not that part, you know. I mean, Barry Bostwick's had his own series, he's been on Broadway, and, you know, played George Washington. You know, I just don't see that, you know. And he said, well, he, he just wants to come in, you know, at least have him come in. And uh, I said, well, sure, you know, I'm a big fan. And Barry came in, and when we read the script together, he had this kind of Reagan-esque befuddled element to it, and I thought, okay, that's what we'll do, you know, because it was very charming. And it was interesting. I wasn't going to make the same mistake again that I had, unfortunately, ended up making with Meredith and Michael Gross, where I, I said, here's the thing, Barry, you have to know, this is Michael Fox's show. That's it. And any idea, anything that comes in, it's going to be filtered through Mike. You're the mayor, but Mike Fox is your deputy. And that's the difference. It's going to go through Mike. So if, you need to understand that so there's no misunderstanding here, you know. And uh, Barry was great. He was really fun. He, I mean, all the, that cast, Richard Kind, you know how, how, how again, luck, I, uh, for the first time, was working with a different casting director. Judith Wiener was, I think, the, had become the president of, Par of UPN or was doing something, and I ended up working with another casting director, Susan Vash, who didn't know me the way Judith did, you know. And she, I see on the list Richard Kind's name. Judith never would have brought Richard Kind in for me because I thought he was too big, too broad. And I said, oh, you, we're wasting our time here. This guy's too broad for me. And she goes, well, he's a friend. This would be very embarrassing if I have to cancel this, you know. And I said, okay, I don't want to embarrass you. Bring him in. You know, that'd be great. But there's no way. You know, he's just not my kind of guy. And Richard Kind comes in, and he's fantastic. <laughs> you know, I have to immediately revise my entire feeling about Richard Kind and think, what have I missed in the last decade of not, not bringing him in? And uh, so that was that. And well, what about the character of Paul Lasseter? Yeah, well, that a little bit came from uh, George Stephanopoulos, who told us this thing that, uh, I think it was George, it may have been Sid Davidoff, but they had a press secretary, and the whole thing was, you can't tell the press secretary the truth. Anyone who tells him the truth gets fined. So you have to give him plausible deniability, but under no circumstances tell him the truth. And so you needed someone who c could commit to being that guy, and, and, and Richard was great. One thing Richard said, he said, it's funny, he said, don't make me Skippy Handelman. I don't want to be that guy. I go, no, not that guy at all. Uh, and you're really good at managing the press, but you're up against Mike Flaherty, and it's, you know, it's Bro Rabbit and Fox here. You know, it's, this guy's good. So um, that, was, that worked out well. It was an interesting story with uh, Carter, you know, with Michael Boatman. We wanted a strong gay character, a black, a black man. We had a lot of uh, resistance in the black community from these actors coming in to read for a gay guy. And they just couldn't see that he had, that this was a powerful, dignified uh, conscience of the city character, you know. And Boatman came in. I don't like to read actors that much, you know. I, I get a much more of a feeling of just from talking to them, you know. And um, so we met, you know, Boatman. And I said, you know, he's the guy. He's just the guy. Bill was there. And um, so I never... I'd never seen him in a comedy. Actually, I'd never seen him on television. He had been in China Beach. And so I think it was the ABC guys calling and said, geez, we don't see Michael Boatman in this. You know, what, 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 what makes you think he can do it? And I, I said, this is not a lie. I said, didn't you see him in China Beach? And they said, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, well, there you go. You know, but of course, I had never seen China Beach. That was my whole thing. Was, didn't you didn't see him in China Beach? So that worked. And so we got Boatman. And then um, Alan Ruck was a guy I always liked. And Mike, Mike was, would read with all these guys and, and sign off as the, you know, and we loved Rock. We just loved Rock. Yeah, what about, what about his character, Stuart? Well, see, as it works out, again, one of these mythic, if you think about it, there were three characters on the show. The character of James, the young speechwriter, in this progression. And then there's Michael Flaherty. And then there's Stuart Bondek. Without realizing, when you look at it, James is who Mike Flaherty once was. Mike is who he is now. Stuart is who he can become if he's not careful. And so you had that journey from light to dark. And I always, the difficulty or the arguments that Mike Fox and I would have creatively was, I wanted to keep him here. 
And Mike was attracted himself as an actor to the darker elements of that character, you know. But actually, there's a difference between George Stephanopoulos and Dick Morris. George, Mike is George Stephanopoulos. He's not Dick Morris. And that was where we wanted to keep him, you know. You start with Alex Keaton with power, you know. That's what, that's what I had in my mind. You know, so Alex Keaton with power. Is, you could bring Michael F Flaherty. He, he had a relationship to, but not a slavish devotion to the truth. You know, but he could tell the difference. You know, a guy like Dick Morris, you know, he can't tell the difference. You know? um, what I loved about George was smart, smarter than the other guys. Wanted to win. He wants to win. George Stephanopoulos wants to win, but he represents a certain ethical behavior. But he's going to win at the end, and that's what I wanted to win but stay within the triangle of who, who we were, you know. Um, and George told us great stories, he said, well, he used, which was, he said, if it, you don't understand what this job is. If I wake up and it's raining, my first thought is, how does this affect my guy? Yankees lost last night. How does that affect my guy? Everything is, how does it affect my guy? I, that's what I do. I protect that guy. And we got a little sense of that. And so our mantra for the show was, you know, in a world where people routinely cheat and lie, and do vicious things to get ahead and often succeed, our guys, our Mike Flaherty, knowing all that and as good at that as anybody ever has been, every once in a while will turn ever so slightly towards the light. And we didn't want to accomplish more than that. We weren't going to say they don't do it, they do it, they, but they're a little bit better. They're just a little bit better and uh, that was interesting. Uh, Connie Britton is Nikki. Yeah, Connie Britton. I loved Connie Britton. She just was one. It reminded me of like Ann Sheridan or one of those uh, great, you know, women from the '40s. She just had that really tough, and just they could see her in New York. Yeah, she was great. Um, we didn't read a lot of women for that. You know, that was the hardest part was Carla was getting the girlfriend for Mike Fox because that's always a problem. Just it's always a problem. Who who America is going to let be his girlfriend too? There, people are very uh, protective, you know. So you wanted somebody. I think I don't know if you've seen. Carl's gone on to a huge career in theater now. I mean, she's really a gifted, gifted actress, and maybe maybe one of the five sweetest people ever, you know. Um, but that character ended up not working for us, you know. It just didn't. It just tied him down too much, and we ended up breaking them up after about thirteen shows. It's funny how you just think, well, this is the home run character, the home run relationship. We were thought we were doing Mad About You at home and uh, Hill Street Blues at work, you know, and the two worlds couldn't exist. They couldn't coexist. And, the, and all the heat ended up being in, in the uh, city council office, you know, because, I mean, the mayor's office, because that was stuff you literally had not seen. And it was really fast paced and uh, we could get all that energy that we had dreamed about. Then what, kind of when we went back home, it was a romantic comedy, you know, and it just wasn't, uh, it just wasn't as powerful.